Ladies and Gelderlands, yes, we've got the Troy Van Leeuwen signature Yamaha. See how it's a bit 335 like it? Anyway, let's have a listen and I shall talk you around it. Let's go. <coughs> So it is pickup time and I do have a little bit of a problem with this and that is that I don't understand it. See, uh, what we've got is a sheet that explains to you, quite honestly, if you bought a guitar and you have to have a, damn it, and if you have to have an instruction sheet on how to work out the pickups, a bit like, uh, is it a jazz master, one of those with the funny wheels on it and what have you. I can't really, you know, I mean guitarists probably, generally speaking, aren't the brightest buttons in the box. Anyway, where I'm confused is here. So what I've discovered is, uh, between my own fiddling and the instructions, is that if I've got both of these switches in the centre, then <coughs> all the pickups work. If I flip the back switch to the front, then I get the two back pickups, and if I switch it this way, I get the front to or the centre of the neck. Here's where it gets confusing. So these uh, three controls here at the bottom are individual volume controls for each pickup, right? Uh, this one's a master tone volume, okay. However, if I have it on all pickups switched on, and just want to isolate, let's say, so I've turned these two off, the neck and the centre, so I've just got this one turned up, which should operate the back one. Bugger all. I've turned the middle one up, and still nothing. Turn the front one up, everything. Turn the centre one off, nothing. Turn it back on, lots. Turn the back one off. Right, so individual control. So what we'll do is this. We'll have a listen to 
all of them, the back two and the front two. That's about the best I'm going to be able to do. <laughs> So this is the centre and the bridge. And it sounds superb, I've got to say. And now the neck and the centre. Listen to it, I'm clean. And starting with all of them, obviously, because of what's going on, I can't really. I think the pickup values that I think I took some photos, but they're probably not going to be very meaningful. Anyway, so listen. <laughs> the centre and the bridge. And the centre and the neck. Right, so look round. So, like the useless plum that I am, I decided to have a look at the serial number, which is at the back of the headstock. It's a maple neck and maple headstock, and you will see, is that the right way up? Oh, yeah. And you will see the serial number there, which is something like OJQQJO005S. So I thought I'll bob that in the uh, guitar data project, see where it was made, what year it was made, and uh, it came up with nothing, so I went on to the Guitar Insight data facility, and that said, made in 2008 in the uh, custom shop in Japan, which is, I can't remember what it's called, anyway, the custom shop in Japan. Hammer, 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 something. Anyway, uh, and uh, so I thought, oh, that's impressive, isn't it, eh? Custom Shop Japan. And then, of course, noticed on the back that it does quite clearly tell us that, of course, it was made in Indonesia. And I'd look on uh, a review site from 2008 when these first came out, and it does actually say on the review site that they're all... They were all made in Indonesia. So, Troy Van Leeuwen, um, Queens of the Stone Age, and other people. He's played with Dave Grohl, and he produces music, and he likes Bigsby's, it seems. I like Bigsby's too. They're very nice. Uh, nice and subtle. Always reminds me of Chris Isaacs. You know, where, is it Wicked Games? It's just a lovely, gentle wave motion. Fabulous things. And this play, and anyway, this plays really, 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 really well. So it's uh, an all maple neck uh, with some lovely uh, proper grovers that they look like 18 to 1 rosematics. Um, and you've got binding on either side of the rosewood fretboard. I assume that the dust inlays, uh, well, I'm going to have a punt at them being acrylic or. Perloid rather than Mother of Pearl. And of course that is set into a fully bound maple laminate body. So it's all maple. Now, apparently uh, it's got a really big uh, centre block in it. So although you've got um, very, very swish looking FLs, which I do like, 
and a beautiful looking scratch plate and, and the switches it, this thing do you know what isn't it nice to look at it looks like a some kind of coupe de ville or something really fat it's nice it's a nice nice looking instrument uh, and sounds great and plays great too um so what was that about oh yes great big a great big center block but apparently this contributes to the weight and i don't notice the weight with it particularly it doesn't feel overly heavy but then again i'm used to playing less balls so perhaps you know everything's relative in there uh so apparently it weighs 10 pounds, which is, a, that's a fair wrong chunk. Uh, but, it, but when it's on your neck, it doesn't feel it, is what I'd say. Uh, it's a great shape. It's not, well, I'm saying it's not too massive, but I don't think it is. Uh, it feels it feels like it feels like half an over 18. Uh, in fact, it looks a bit like a half an over 18 as well, for that matter. Or a 335, which is, you know more or less the same thing so yes we've got three p90s as you can see on the did i mention the body is a uh, maple laminate um front back and sides yeah so three p90s obviously all working because we've tapped on with a screwdriver so we know they're all working um you've got the uh, bigsby with yamaha's own uh, version of an abr bridge there with the you know rise and fall thumb wheels actions exactly where we want to see it um three allegedly three individual volume controls for each pickup and the master tone knob which does work there's no label evident that i can see inside the f hole and of course the other f holes are partially obscured by the by the lovely looking scratch plate i love the i love this mini scratch plate for these knobs here for your pickup selectors with the white um, outside and obviously same with the regular scratch plate so all in all all in all all in all 2008 i don't think they made them in a different year uh maybe they did uh, please write in tell me if i'm wrong but if you can find one of these happy days they're nice guitars when they came out in 2008 they were pricey they were about 650 quid back then so i should think that you'll be paying a little more than that probably these days if you can find one that's a minter like this is so yes no visible scars it's in good order i have to say that this is low mileage doesn't look like it's had much of a life yeah, so um, usual things, you know, if you're in the market for one of these, just make sure, make sure, certainly, make sure that all the knobs and switches work, because there are loads of those, and um, we're always looking for the area where the head meets the neck and where the neck meets the body, and this one is absolutely tip-top. With all that, I shall say ta -ra. So thanks all ever so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Adios, amigos. Ta-ra.